In this video on advanced topspin features we are going to explore some functions of the multi-display mode. Multi-display mode allows a user to overlay two or more spectra. It will also allow some simple mathematical manipulations. Multi-display mode is the best way to compare spectra, monitor spectrum differences across experiments and it can help with spectral interpretation. It is very useful for reviewing experiments that collect multiple spectra, like kinetics or variable temperature runs. You can enter multi-display mode with a spectrum open in the data window by either typing .md in the command line or left-clicking the multi-display mode button in the button bar. When open, multi-display mode will show a line of buttons in the data window. There will also be a data list table on the left side column below the file browser. I will discuss these more in a moment. First, we have to add another spectrum into the multi-display mode window. You could do this by either using the RE command or by dragging the new spectrum from the browser panel. The data list table will include the file names of individual files that are open. This table also allows you to select which spectrum is active for adjustments. Click on a line in the highlight will show that the trace is active. You could also hold the shift or control keys to make consecutive or non-consecutive selections. You could also select a spectrum by clicking near or on the small box above the trace. The first button, that has an icon with an S under a spectrum will allow you to deselect all the datasets. When no traces are selected the mouse scroll wheel will adjust the vertical intensity of all the open spectra. The top button bar controls will always work on all spectra open in multi-display mode. A subset of these controls is also present on the multi-display mode button bar. When no traces are selected, these controls act on all the open spectra. However, when one or more spectra are active, these buttons only adjust the active traces. This is also true for the mouse scroll wheel. The button with the letter R will reset the scaling and shifts back to the original values. Selected traces can be removed from the display with the icon that has the red X. To demo other functions let's make multiple selections in the browser panel and add them into multi-display mode. Click, hold and dragging the mouse cursor will make a chemical shift expansion on all the traces. The buttons with the up and down arrows will allow you to reorder the traces. You first select the spectrum you want to move and then click on the arrows. As the file name moves up or down in the list, the trace moves in the multi-display window. This operation cannot be performed on the first or main spectrum and that file name must always remain on the bottom of the list. The toggle display button will change the offsets that each spectrum has in the display. The initial vertical offset is calculated to fit all the spectra. With the default values it will toggle to no vertical or horizontal offset to give a true overlay. The show stacked view button will allow you to fine tune the offsets in both the vertical and horizontal directions. Most of the time you will leave the horizontal offset to zero so the chemical shifts will remain aligned. The vertical step is in percent and it will allow you to move traces out of the window, so you have to choose values that give you the offset you require but does not eliminate any datasets. When values are entered into the stacked view, the toggle display button will switch the offsets to either the default or those entered. The button with the eye above a trace will remove the file names from the display. This is useful if you want to get a crude printout of the results. For this you would select print from the file menu. Make sure the Print Active Window radio button is selected and then click OK. If you are working on the facility's computers, click on the Page Setup tab in the Print dialog box and make sure the media size is legal before clicking the Print button. Multi display mode can be useful for two dimensional results. Here is a HSQC spectrum. This experiment correlates protons to carbons that are bonded directly to each other. To help interpretation of HMBC spectra, which shows correlations over multiple bonds, it is helpful to overlay the two datasets. In this case, the HMBC results are the red contours while the HSQC remains blue and green. The peaks under the protons form columns that show the single bond correlation and the multiple bond correlations. The 1D carbon spectrum can also be added. This is helpful for determining assignments in congested areas.
The last function for multi-display mode is spectrum addition and subtraction. This can be useful for spectra with significant background signals. This is a boron-11 spectrum of boric acid. If you blow up the vertical scale you can see a broad peak. This is from the borosilicate glass of the tube and materials of the probe. Every boron spectrum will show this background and it can interfere with the analysis of spectra. If you run a sample that does not contain any compound with boron you can obtain the background. In multi-display mode, the button with the delta icon is the difference mode and the button with the sigma icon is the sum mode. When you click on either button a third trace will show with the result. Here is the spectrum with the background subtracted from the boric acid spectrum. Note. You have to make some fine adjustments to the intensity of the background. The results are not perfect due to slight differences in the phasing of each dataset. It would be very difficult to get a better result than this, but as you can see the result is a significant improvement from the original spectrum. The result can be saved with the button with the floppy disk icon. It will be in the same main folder but with a different processing number. The default is 999. The result can be further processed and plotted. These are some of the operations you can perform with multi-display mode. Please let us know if you have any questions about multi-display mode or if you have any suggestions for further videos. Thanks for watching.